This is a homework help video for section 3.4 problem 11 from my lab statistics. We're dealing with Z scores and quartiles and interquartile range and lower and upper fences in this problem. The problem says the accompanying data represent the miles per gallon of a random sample of cars with a three cylinder one liter engine. In part A, we're asked to compute the z-score corresponding to the individual who obtained 37.4 miles per gallon and interpret this result. So first of all, we are told that we have a sample. And that is important because when we go to find the standard deviation, we want to use the sample standard deviation. So as a reminder, what we need when we're finding a z-score is we need to use the formula z equals the value minus the mean, and I'm going to use the symbol for sample mean because I know I'm dealing with a sample, divided by the standard deviation. So there's my formula for z-score. So now what I need to do is I need to use stat crunch in order to get the mean and standard deviation of the problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the data. I click on the double rectangle to open in stat crunch. And I'm going to do my summary stat, so stat, Summary stats, columns, select that column, variable one, and I want the mean and the standard deviation. And remember in StatCrunch, that first standard deviation, STDDEV, that's the sample standard deviation. If I had wanted the population, I would have needed to go to unadjusted. But in this case, the problem said I have a sample. So I'll do STD DEV. All right, so I get a mean of 38.995833 and a standard deviation of 3.5360847. So that's a lot of um, places after the decimal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my calculator and the value that they gave me in the problem, let's see if I can pull that up. So they gave me 37.4. So that's my X value. So I'm gonna come over here. Um, let me pull up the stat crunch window again. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the 37.4, since that's the X value that they gave me. I'm going to subtract the mean. So I'm subtracting 38.995833. I'm not going to bother rounding at this point. I'm just going to put in the entire mean that they gave me. So I have that. I'm gonna divide by the standard deviation. Oops, I accidentally deleted it. So 37.4 minus 38.995833. I'm gonna divide by the standard deviation, which was 3.536 zero eight four seven okay so there's my standard deviation we go ahead and enter that it does say round to two decimal places as needed so negative zero point four five so the z score can be negative negative zero point four five and that indicates that the data value is how many standard deviations above or below the mean. 
So this part over here is always going to be mean. Your z-score tells you how far you are from the mean. The value that you put here, the number of standard deviations, you're always going to put a positive value. And then when you're selecting whether it's above or below the mean, you're going to go by the, the sign that you have on your z-score. So I have a negative z-score. That means that my value was below the mean. If I had a positive z-score as my first answer here, I would say that the value is above the mean. Okay, quartiles are also a stat crunch thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up stat crunch again. And now my data is not loading. Okay, um, so I had to exit out and start a new problem because my data wouldn't load into StatCrunch. So again, this is 3.4 number 11. I'm just working with slightly different data than I was a minute ago. So on this one, I got a positive z-score of 1.24, and that indicated that the data value is 1.24 standard deviations, and because it's positive, it tells me it's above the mean. Okay, now the next part of the problem, determine the quartiles, that's where we left off. So let me pull up my data. I made sure that it would load this time. Okay, so I have my data. And what I want to do to find the quartiles is go to stat, summary stats, columns, and I'm going to select variable one or column one, and I'm just gonna leave these default items highlighted. So I'm not gonna actually click on anything here. I'll just go with the default items and hit compute and what this shows me is it shows me, you'll see over here on the right, Q1 is 36.85, Q3 is 41.1, and then Q2 is the median. So anytime I'm asked for Q2, that's always going to be the median um, number. So I'm, this says do not round, so I'm gonna put in the 36.85, For Q2, I look back at the median, 38.6. And for Q3, it's listed right here at the end, 41.1. Okay, so I've got my quartiles. And now I'm asked to compute and interpret the interquartile range or IQR. So now let me um, pull up my pen. So if you recall the IQR or interquartile range is equal to Q3, so your third quartile, minus Q1, or your first quartile. So what I need to do is use these numbers here. My Q3 is 41.1. So let me grab a calculator. And I'll just pull it over here. So I have um, Q3 is 41.1. I'm going to subtract Q1, which in my case is 36.85. And that's my inner quartile range, 4.25. Now, what that is, it is, it, the interquartile range is 4.25, and it is the range of the middle 
50% of the data. Because remember Q3, the third quartile, that's like the 75th percentile. Q1, the first quartile, is the 25th percentile. So think quarters, like one quarter is 25 cents, two quarters is 50 cents, three quarters is 75 cents. So I have the 75th percentile minus the 25th percentile. So that's the middle 50%. Wow, they give us a lot of options here. So the middle 50% of the observations in the data. And that's always going to be true for the inner quartile range. It's the middle 50% of the observations. Now I'm asked to determine the lower and upper fences. So my lower fence is always going to be my first quartile. So Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. And remember the IQR or inner quartile range is what we just found in part C. And my upper fence is going to be your third quartile and I should have a Q1 for lower and a Q3 for upper. My third quartile plus 1.5 times the IQR. Okay, so here I need to look back at the problem. Okay, so my first quartile was 36.85. So I'm gonna put that in. 36.85 minus 1.5 times my IQR was 4.25, I believe. Yep, 4.25. So there's my lower fence. My upper fence is gonna be my third quartile, so 41.1 plus 1.5 times 4.25. Now, if you're using a, a basic calculator where you can't put in the, the addition and multiplication in one line, you'll wanna do your multiplication first before you do the subtracting or adding. So you're fo following those order of operations rules. So my lower fence is 30.475 and my um, upper fence is 47.475. Okay, so that was 30.475 and um, 47.475. Okay. Now the last part says, are there any outliers? So we, um, we found these fences any number that is below the lower fence or above the upper fence is going to be an outlier. So I'm going to actually come back to StatCrunch and I'm going to sort my data just so I can see really easily whether anything is below 30.475 or above 47.475. So I go to data, sort, I'm going to select column one or variable one, and I'm going to say variable one ascending, replace the current column. 
Okay, so now they're in order from smallest to largest. So my first value, my smallest value is 32.5. That is not below the lower fence. So I have no outliers on the lower end. You might have a different result um, for your problem 11. On the upper end, I have this 48.8 that is above my upper fence. So that is an outlier, 48.8. The next one down is not above my upper fence. So that tells me my only outlier is the 48.8. All right. So if you have more questions on it, we can discuss in class or send me an email.